Hello everybody and welcome to another changelog analysis. This is version 6.76, only less than a month than the previous patch has come out and we already see a new one and with me as always is Luminous. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I know you guys are waiting for our patch analysis. The previous ones has been somewhat popular and we're very, very happy to hear that. So here's 6.76. Very, very excited to talk about this one. Yep, and unlike in the last video, we are actually going to talk about every single change because there's no giant mechanically uh, new important things. There's nothing like the gold. It's a shorter buff. patch overall, too. Yeah, it's it's a hero focused patch and an item focused patch. It's no game mechanics like Roshan, uh, Aegis Responder. So we'll just go over every single hero. And hopefully, you guys can stay long at home and follow us as this is the change log. So. We are going to open up. Alchemist, unstable concoction now explodes around you if you are killed while charging it up. The goblins read cap increased from 26 to 30. Now, uh, I've seen a little bit of uh, questions because people think that Alchemist is powerful enough. He farms ridiculously fast. He's been seen from time to time. And uh, overall, they feel like the go goblins read cap uh, increased is a little bit unnecessary. Thumbs down with this uh, patch change. I, I completely agree with what you just said. Uh you described me perfectly. I think the the previous patch change already hit him to if if you're if you're a decent farmer, if you don't have a reaction rate of a dead person, Shots you're hitting me. if you're hitting you're hitting for eight hundred GPM, nine hundred GPM. I can't farm for a jack squat and I, I get thousand GPM like constantly with this hero. Don't think we need any more buff, uh, at least on the goblin degree department. So I don't think this is necessary. I don't have anything more to say to beyond that though. Alright, moving on to the next one because I don't think the unstable concoction change is really too yeah. significant, it's just there. Alright, Ancient Apparition, uh, overall the attack count increased by one at every level, so you get one more attack of that plus damage. Still, overall, I mean, it's chilling touch. Uh, haven't seen nearly as much Ancient Apparition as expected, I saw, I thought we'd see him a bit more in his support capacity. But I guess uh, Jakiro really just took his place, so I don't know if this will necessarily change anything, but... You know, making it a bit better, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, your mana pool is just really too short to support it. It's a great spell if you ha find a situation that you, you need it for, but the cooldown's ridiculously long as well. Uh, again, you still need, you know, Kofi. You still want that one point in Ice Vortex for slow, so it's an awkward ability if you want to fit it in early. Later on, you want stats, so it we'll have to wait and see. I haven't, personally have not tried out too many Chilling Touch builds, but, you know, looking forward to seeing it, you know, being continuously buff, and one of these days we're going to try it out. <laughs> Definitely getting that ancient apparition drow ranger dual lane man Something plus like 100 that. billion damage right off the bat. Arc Warden, he's in Dota one uh, so far. I watched I don't know one game. About this year. He is pretty broken, but yeah, not going to discuss him because he will sh most certainly get changed as time goes on. Bane Elemental and Feeble cooldown decrease from 12 to 10, not too significant. Bane can now wake himself up from Nightmare with a sub ability. Now this is pretty interesting. I don't know. We've been seeing a lot more Bane play, especially from teams like Empire, because uh, he's just a really, really powerful disabler. He can isolate a lane from reducing it from 3 to 2. He can sort of uh, win a mid lane just by disabling. He can just really, really cause a lot of problems. And now he can wake himself up from Nightmare. So you a lot more potential to save himself. This is a pretty cool change. I think it looks this looks like a small change, but it's actually pretty big because not many people know this. The first second of nightmare it gives you is it makes that target invulnerable for the first second. So I'm sure as player figured this out, you could do a lot of shenanigans, nightmare to dodge stuns, nightmare to dodge nukes, and then wake yourself up. It is a very costly mana cost of 165 and a very, very long cooldown of 15. But I mean, hey, if you're dodging nukes, I'm I'm sure we're gonna see some World Dota stuff with this. Um it's it's a it's a slight buff, it's a small buff, but you know, Bane is not seeing enough play. Uh, and I'm sure this is going to make him see more play. Yeah, he becomes a bit more powerful in late game once he gets that mana pull up. It's definitely uh, a pretty cool change, and Bane is a hero who is seen from very, very niche picks, and he might be seen a little bit more common, and I got a lot of criticism saying that we cannot pronounce the word niche right, so it's niche, niche. not niche. It's niche. <laughs> we are uncultured swine. Anyway, the change I am most furious about is coming up next. Bat Rider strength gain decreased from 2.72 before. Completely unnecessary. It's not like we don't see Bat Rider all the time at the moment. He's not first picked in any of these games. We don't see him in the Grand Files of Star Eyes or in the Thor Frag by Open. He is just uh, never seen these days. So I think this change, it should be a buff to 7.2 strength so you can introduce it. Inverse it. 
I just see B Balling's uh, angry tweet about it as he read 6.75. But unfortunately, he is picked a lot. And maybe the the big buff was a little bit too strong, to be honest. I, I do believe he's completely a first-tier viable pick. Yeah. And maybe this uh, will adjust him a little bit. I mean, he already has enough issues. Um, and this strength gain decrease is going to be one of those issues that he now has to address. 2.4 is still very respectable, though. I, I, I don't think this enough will remove him completely. He is going to get played. Uh, especially when people have rediscovered why you know Napalm is such an important uh, you know kind of a pseudo disable, how game breaking he can be once he gets off a fast start. And to be honest, one of the better heroes to lane against Templar Assassin. Let's not forget that. So I, I think he's going to be with us for a while. Yeah, in all seriousness, just because I follow, follow Batrider very closely, this shouldn't really change too much. He might be seeing second pick rather than first pick. Might be seeing the second round of picks rather than the first round of picks, but really, this doesn't change too much. Barret is still with that increased duration on Firefly, increased turning animation, and decreased uh, cast time on Napalm. Still, those were probably the more significant buffs. And the fact that he got 0.7 uh, growth in the last patch, and now it's just 0.4, it's still... I think somebody did calculations, and at level 25, it's 140 extra HP, so it's really not that important. It's so. it, Whatever, no big deal. It's yep. a gauntlet. All well, right. Less than gone, but you know, yeah. Now Anyways. this is the hero that everybody wants us to talk about. Centaur strength growth increased from 2.6 to 3.8, 1.2 strength growth per level. So that's gonna mean I think around uh, do quick calculations like 35, 38 strength growth at level 25, and his ultimate stampede gives everybody on the map all your allied player units. Do you know off the top of your head if it includes like summons and necro books and stuff like that? Any ally player units, so I, I guess includes you know treants, four spirits, whatever. Yep. Dominate the centaurs, pretty insane. Map maximum movement speed, zero yes. collision for a short yes. duration, so you can run through everything. And any, any enemy units you or your allies come in contact will take some damage and get stunned. So the stun duration, 1.25 seconds. Damage, uh, pretty good. It scales with your strength, so overall. A respectable nuke, but it's global, has a 65 second cooldown, a 50 mana cost. This is gonna be so much fun, my god. This is gonna be so much fun. Possibility of so much fun when you're running in, initiating, if the fact that you could use things like tree to run in like that, it adds a new level of uh, micro, it adds a new level of team, uh, team building. But keep in mind, this is a 65 second cooldown. 50 mana cost, so there is a possibility we're going to see more Naga-esque escape, especially when you're three-man ganking. Oh, Centaur pops the thing on bot lane to help some teammate on top lane, and he runs away. So, um, it's the cooldown's low enough, you can just do that. I, the mana yeah. cost is non-existent, so... I think this makes him, like, one of the best support gankers in the game. Just uh, it, He really is, I mean... And the fact that Double Edge is now an AoE as well in the last patch, it's like a... Pretty small AoE, but it's an AoE as well. He's I really just think getting a lot of changes. I really think, and this is, you know, I'm sure this is not the first time you guys have heard this, but I really think this is overpowered. The fact, I mean, what it does is really great, and, and that's fine, but the cooldown as well as the mana cost, way too low, way too low. I, I want to see at least an 80, 85 second cooldown, at least like 100 mana cost. I, I know he's, he's, a, he's, he's a hero that has a very low intelligence, so mana could be an issue, but Arcane Boost solves everything, uh, especially so low, so I, I feel like it's too easy for Stampede to both use offensively and defensively. Now, you might make the argument, you know, you don't ever want to use this spell defensively. You don't want to use, you know, your Panda Split to run away. You don't want to use the Naga Siren to run away. But it happens. The fact that the, the, it happens, and you, the fact that you can do that makes the spell a lot more stronger. And overpower is where I'm going to be standing on this one. I have to agree with you. And what's interesting is the plus two times your strength, it scales remarkably well as your strength goes up. Well, actually, not too remarkably. Like... If you can get 50, eh, it's a decent amount of strength growth. It gives you some damage. But the fact that it's global nature and it makes your collision size zero, is that really necessary? I mean, if you just have the normal collision size, at least you can have some lichen throw problems. You won't have to just phase through everything. But now, collision size zero, you can just literally run, run through creeps and run through anything. Mm -hmm. And it's just, uh, it might be a little too good, but we saw that in the last patch. Uh, we'll wait and see how this shapes up. He's not yet in Dota 2. So uh, it might take a little bit. Of time to sort of figure out how this will work exactly. All right, Shen, Hand of God cooldown increased from 120, 140 to 140, 130, 120. Nerf to his early game, 
Penitence damage amplify increased from 7, 14, 21, 28 percent to 8, 16, 24, 32 percent. Matches soul values now, so a slight buff won't really affect Chen's Chen's viability. He is picked because he is good. Yeah, well, Chen's Chen's early game getting a knock a little bit like this is going to be okay. If you guys are wondering if the penitence uh, penitence change will do anything, the answer is no, because you have to max test the faith now. Not only is it a great nuke, it really did, uh, the only really less than the send back time of test of phase sub ability. So penitence. Getting a buff right now means he's getting a little bit stronger late game, but really, you're Chen. You're not. That's not the territory that Chen wants to be at. So a slight nerf, but he is going to get picked. So not too much to talk about that. Yep. Clockwork hookshot now pulls Clockwork to allies instead of getting blocked by them. Finally, as uh, this was an Aghanim Scepter only upgrade, and mm -hmm. now that the fact that he has it so many times, I tried to get a team fight after ganking in the mid lane, and you know a creep runs in front of me or something like that, or my hero a hero runs in front of me because the clock hook is just so fast that you can't really warn your teammates saying, "All right, I'm going in," uh, and it hooks onto the ally, and then you're just stuck there, and we all your allies are taking a fight three v four or something like that. So I'm glad to see that's finally changed. Hookshot Agnims upgrade cooldown decreased from 15 to 12. Cool stuff. That's not really that game breaking, but the hookshot to the allies really if it helps. It helps. Still still a horrible hero. Yeah, he's useless to late game. Yeah. I don't want to say useless, but you know, he has two ways to cancel BKB. That's cute. But uh, you know, not not exactly forefront of the competitive uh, scene right now, but it's fine. Let's move on. Yep. Crystal Main Brilliant R now has twice the effect on Crystal Main. I think I'll leave this one to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for leaving this one to me. I I love Crystal Maiden as a hero simply because uh, throughout time her skill build has evolved. We've seen like Aura Max build, we've seen Nova Max build, we've seen Frostbite Max build, we've seen taking uh, ultimates, not taking ultimates. I think we are again in, in a, a time to shift build again because Grillin's Aura now twice as effect on Crystal Maiden gives the incentive to actually skill it, especially in lower level play like pub, pub play where, to be honest, you are actually lacking in mana all the freaking time. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to go back into a, a stage where we're going to see Aura max by 7, uh, but we're more likely to see aura, more Aura uh, compared to more stats. And, hey, I'm a Crystal Maiden fan. I, I think the Aura a lot of time is very, very under, underestimated, especially in certain type of lineup, um, especially in heavy caster-based lineups. Um, I don't think this is going to bring her back in a competitive scene in any, in any shape or form, but it's going to make her more versatile as a hero. And who could say no to versatility? Yeah, it's always so weird to me to see, even if you do get points in Aura, Crystal Maiden always has to carry on clarities, which is yes. just uh, awkward. Yeah. Very, it doesn't really seem to fit the hero design. And the point of the yeah. hero is just to have your thing. That's why the spells are a pretty long cooldown. And the fact that even you have to carry on clarities, um, it's, it's awkward, like you just mentioned. So this is cool, but in the grand scheme of things, I mean, you get a maximum of four mana regen per second on Crystal Maiden, which is cool, but that's when you max out Aura. Other than right. that, it's pretty meh on Crystal Main. It, it's it's not, like, the biggest. I think right. it's good she, enough for now. She She's not getting picked because of this. Right. Like she, the, the reason that she's picked is you want the AoE early or something, or you want a large range slow, or you want that Frostbite to eat that Chen Creep for, for a while. That's the reason she's getting picked. But, you know, a little benefit helps. But I think we're sending too much time on a hero that, unfortunately, that doesn't get enough love. So, let's move on. She gets enough love from you. That's true. Saw you at TI2. Oh, that was a windrunner. Never mind. Meanwhile, no, I have a picture uh, with CM2. <laughs> Darkseer vacuum cooldown increased from 19 to 22. Darkseer is still going to be first pick, first ban status. The only problem now is that you can't really cast it two times in a team fight, which seems perfectly fair. Yep. I mean, I think I think that spell is probably still one of the best spells in the game. Uh, yep. Glad to see it nerfed down a little bit more. Yeah. Some people would argue that Darkseer needs more nerfs, and I'd say uh, it's just too difficult to bounce Darkseer without sort of removing him completely. And I like, think to be he's honest... A, he's a I, hero I would... who requires enough skill that he's well worth uh, having on your team, and it would really be a shame, maybe because I'm a Darkseer fan, uh, it would be a shame if he was just dropped off the face of the earth. I don't think he really... F fix this hero without breaking him because you know that's that's what everybody does he wins long lane like he he team fight specialist like i wouldn't cry if i don't see this nerf but i wouldn't jump for joy seeing this nerf either like it's just okay you know whatever no big deal three seconds let's move on yep doom rigor doom duration increased from 13 to 15 so two 
extra seconds of DPS, so maybe you'll be able to get that kill in the early game. That's pretty cool. A little bit more uh, insurance to get that kill. Don't really have to take mechanics into fact, but this won't really change Doom. Nope. But yeah, the other no the other changes in the last patch, last patch would help to change Doom more than this one. All right, Drow Ranger, true shot or mechanics reward? Yes, yes. I'm I'm very very happy with the. Uh... Yeah. Uh, well, you want me to read this one out? No, nah, I will. Uh, I was okay. just waiting for you to finish your sentence. But Global Aura gives you and all allied range units a portion of your agility as bonus damage. Bonus damage, 14, 18, 22, 26% of your agility as damage. Can be toggled on and off to affect creeps or not. This is uh, pretty insane. Yeah, it, well, let, let's move on to marksmanship as well, because it's going to okay. work very much so in conjunction with each other. All right. Passively provides bonus agility. If there are no nearby enemy heroes, your focus improves, and the bonus agility is doubled. 20, 30, 40 agility, AoE 375. So this synergizes with True Shot Aura. So that means if there's no enemies, you get around you. So while you're farming away, you get plus 80 agility at level 16, and mm -hmm. that scales with the True Shot. This is a lot of damage. Very, very powerful. I know you've talked with Nebula a lot about this. What do you think about this? Not with Nebula yet, but I've definitely talked to a lot of different people about this. So um, let's talk about the most important thing to me, which is the 375 range. Now, ideally, if you're hitting for 625, I think that's her attack range. You know, you're getting the full 80 plus agility. Your entire team is getting the, you know, 26% of that plus agility and your base agility. So everybody's hitting a lot. And that's the... That's the ideal situation. But a lot of times when Dota team fight is breaking out, you have people with blink daggers, you have things like stampede, hookshot, and whatever that might be, you're not going to be able to stick with 375 range. And in a sense, if you don't have that uh, have that range buffer, if, if you will, you are strictly worse off compared to the old Drought Ranger. But that comes down to things like positioning. Now let's look at all the plus benefit side. Um, the fact that she could be other side of the map and gives her team a, a kind of semi how uh, benefit is absolutely insane. Not let's not forget that with your plus eighty agility and twenty percent of that, you're giving your entire creeps team on range creeps catapult. They get insane amount of damage in a late game. So even if that you know creep equilibrium is a huge part of late game situation. When you get things like a range racks, it means so much more. Even if you don't get things like range racks, your creep wave is going to constantly outpush their creep wave. I think this this small clause, the fact that you could toggle it on and off to affect creep waves, it's absolutely huge. And uh, I think we're going to see effects of that in, in pro games all the freaking time from now on. Yeah, I mean, Necrobooks get the benefits. Uh, ranged summons, so Eidolons would get the benefits. Uh, one thing that I do have to remark on, and this is largely taken from the DC general chat in Skype, uh, Nebula commented, Drow is a very subtle carry. She's not really too many active spells. And the fact that they're buffing more subtle carries makes a lot of sense. And I argued that, um, well, I agree with Nebula. So this really actually helps to put a lot more skill into Drow because you just have to rely so much more on positioning rather than just a clicking BKB and just clicking. Because if yes. you want to maximize your damage, you really just have to position yourself perfectly. So I, I think this is a really nice change to add some complexity to what seemed to be a pretty simple hero for the most part. And, I you know, I'm. Yeah, and you know, I'm not I'm not that good with Drow, so I'm probably a scrub. Of course, Drow already had a lot of subtlety already, but this just emphasizes it more. And I think a little bit more emphasis on skills like this could mean a lot. I I, I already think the old Drow is already a very subtle uh, hero to play, like you talked yep, about. No doubt. The 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 chance to or the, the decision to level up Frost Arrow, the ability to toggle on and off during team fight to toggle between Frost as well as Life Steal. That's already a lot of work, and you're silencing it and things like that using Manta BKB. Now you have to, you know, play sniper esque in a sense, dealing with less range, but still have to stay outside of range, dealing against enemy BKBs, blink daggers. It, it's just a lot of stuff to worry about. But the upswing is again the creep pushing I talked about, the fact that you could help your team by not being there to help your team. You know, the Dota games, you know, mobility is being more important. The fact that you could globally do a lot more stuff is it, a plus. Now, one thing that I, I will end on. Uh, is I want to quote LD a little bit as he, I think I read his post on Reddit. Drow is a very, very boring hero in a sense. Um, subtlety is great, you know, it, it makes me, a caster like me too, kind of fanboy over, oh, look at that tiny play, he switched shreds and all that <laughs> stuff. That's good. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't make games more exciting. Uh, you know, it doesn't help a new viewer enjoy Drow more in a sense, right? So, 
kind of iffy on that. So, you know, just want to put LD. Last thing on Drow. How do you think this will affect her status as a playable carry? Do you think she'll be picked? She'll probably be picked more. The question is, what will her role be as a carry? Will she be seen as one of the top carries to pick up? Will she be seen as sort of a niche carry to pick up? Will she never be seen? I don't think I understand Drow enough right now to make a statement about that. I, I The fact that she adds global pushing power is not something to be looked over upon. Like this is, we're entering profit territory. We're entering Tinker territory, and those are, you know, very stable competitive here on Don't Right. Um, and the fact that she could dish out insane damage is no joke. She she pushes very quick by herself, you know, plus 30 agility, you double it, you know, level 11. You could, she could mow down tower by herself. So I think she has what it takes to be in the comp, comp scene. I have not played her enough. I haven't, I haven't seen team play her, so I, I don't feel safe making a bold prediction like that. Yep, uh, my prediction is that... This change, it's cool. It gives her a lot of improvements. It won't really help her in the long scheme. She'll be a niche pick at best, yes. in my honest opinion, because it doesn't really amplify her strengths by a huge amount. It helps a bit, and it doesn't really fix any of her weaknesses. She's squishy. She's slow. She can be bursted down quite easily without BKB. She's a single-target DPS machine. I think that the new True Shot maybe helps with the, the fact that she's single-target. I mean, she's yeah, giving I mean, her team, team more fights. stuff. Yep. But, you know, yeah, she's still a single, single target at the end of the day. But okay. I think we're beat, beating this dead drow, dead horse. <laughs> Moving on to gyrocopter, homing missile distance required for max damage reduced from 2,000 to 1,500. Okay, homing missile stun duration rescale from 2.5 to 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8. Okay, rocket barrage damage increased to more damage later on. So this is a gyro we see sometimes. Well... Gyro we see rarely. Uh, it's a favorite of Root. Korea plays a pretty strong dr uh, gyro. I always say uh, gyro, pretty useless hero. But, you know, this is uh, this won't really change too much. I play gyrocopter a lot, and I could tell you that the Rocket Barrage getting that benefit scaling. Previously, you're scaling, you're leveling it three or four times, and you're not even doubling the damage. Now you are. It looks like it's only a three damage increase, but when you're hitting for what whatever billion rockets are hitting, yeah, it's, it's a sizable, it's a it's huge... It's 90, 90 increase. I think. Now, it again, it doesn't fix his problem, which is he's very, very squishy. Based well, on you know, you know, he he has to use well, range is somewhat fixed or somewhat helped out what what the previous flat cannon change. You're getting 200 range from that, so he's still he's still good. Uh, he just kills harder right now. Um, I, I I completely believe he's a competitive viable hero. Niche niche niche. Niche, niche pick in a sense, and we do see root team, uh, team root doing doing things like that. I'm just waiting for them to make rocket barrage hit towers because then he's he's completely viable by that point. But I love the hero, and I'm I'm glad to see him see more. I'm glad to see him getting buff. I don't think he needs a buff. I think he's already good enough. Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing was just that increased 15 move speed and a bit of a range tweak. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, moving on to Jakiro, the Twin Head Dragon Ice Path creation delay increased from 0.4 to 0.5 seconds. Um, Ice Path mana cost increased from 75 to 90. Completely necessary. Jakiro will still be picked a lot, uh, but just make him a bit more fair. You can't just uh, sit in lane, spam it with a ridiculous base mana pool that was pretty large, and a slight delay means that, you know, it's uh, a little bit trickier to land. So it's completely necessary, but we're still going to see Jakiro a lot. Yep. Uh... Great hero with the ice path uh, makes it a little bit more fair. I think 75 is a little bit ridiculous. I, I might even say bump it up to 100 to make him. A lot of times right now they just spam this like without any consequences. Well, a single clarity is going to give you two ice path. Uh, I know it only heals 100, but you know with base regen and all that stuff. Um, so I, I I think this is a very very welcome change. So yeah. Yep. Crab okay. exorcism base ghost count. Uh, increased to a bit more ghosts during the mid and late game. A uh, couple more ghosts. This won't really change Krob too much. She does a bit more damage, but she's still going to be seen in only hardcore push strats. So, you know, get her a bit stronger in that regard. You know, could see a bit more, but really not going to change too much. Yeah, it gives her a little bit more late game, um, but you don't really want to be in late game situation with Krob. She She's already a powerful late game. Uh, yep. This adds a little bit more beyond that, but yeah. Definitely, definitely. Kunkka, Tidebringer, level 4 AoE increased from 500 to 600. Won't change too much. Uh, but, you know, it's a bit more annoying to lane against him, I suppose, mm. once he gets level 4. Already annoying enough. Yep, it's uh, the ranged heroes, unless it's Lena or Drow or Sniper. 
Uh, Lena Laguna Blade cooldown rescaled from 90-70-50 to 70-60-50. More damage earlier on. Uh, we see Lena from time to time. I think this will help a decent amount because Lena doesn't get too many levels. So a 20 second decrease in ultimate is not insignificant. I think this will actually help. Yeah, her mana the mana cost of Laguna Blade and the fact that she struggles to get mana fixing items to make that work uh, really makes it difficult for her to take advantage of this 20 second uh, buff in terms of the cooldown. I think what they're trying to really make it do is to try to distinguish Lena and Lion apart. You know, Lion recently getting the huge uh, bonus damage, but then also the EXP, or excuse me, the, the, the cooldown nerf, and now they're, they're buffing Lena's cooldown. They're trying to say Laguna and Finger Death Two very different things, and now it's really like that. Laguna Blade, something could pop all the time. I'm hoping we we might see a little bit more solo mid Lena, you know, back in the days of pubs. I think this is a very, very viable of solo mid now, especially in pub games, where you could take advantage of the mana, uh, the short core down by getting, you know, arcane boots or bottles or whatever, getting some mana region item. Maybe we want, we want to see some, uh, you know, kind of a three row Lena, getting a little bit farm on her. Uh, I don't want to get too big in terms of prediction, but I don't think this is going to be anything big, to be honest. Uh, I think we'll see her more, uh, sort of like a maybe get onto something like a disruptor status where you're seeing. She she really needs arcane boots to take advantage of this, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, but every team always gets one or two arcane boots. Fair, yeah. Okay, uh, moving on to line, I think it'll help Lena a bit more, but you know, I don't play her often. Uh, Lion, Mana Drain, break, break Threshold, in Range, increase from 850 to 1100, cool stuff, Finger of Death, cooldown, rescaled from 170, 105, 40 to 160, 100, 40, uh, okay, Finger of Death, cast range, increase from 700 to 900, that's probably the biggest, but overall, eh. No, Finger of Death, it, it is huge, it is huge, now that you can actually auto-attack a couple times with Hex, uh, impale and stuff, and then once they're outside of your auto range, BAM! Finger uh, 40ks or, or kill, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, but honestly, we're not going to see Lion because of this. Just, uh, just You're go. not going to see it because of this. You are going to see it because of the Mana Brain Threshold. Yeah. I'm just kidding, by the way. Mana Brain is, is Mana Drain. Mana, mana Brain? Brain. <laughs> mana Brain. It's <laughs> that good. Mana Drain is like ridiculous already. Why do they keep I know, this seriously. Spell? It's obviously the best is, spell in the game. Okay, ju just try it now. After the buff, just try it. Just get it at level 1 and just pop it on them. And you see them running off the lane. Like, it's a lane control ability. It, it might as well be. It's insane. Yeah, next popping with Luna, you're going to see that in action, probably. <laughs> After the buff, maybe. We'll After see. the buff. Luna, yeah. Lunar Blessing, bonus damage increased. Uh, Luna already a pretty stable carry these days, so not too sure why you buff it more, but okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, Thumbs down. Yeah, not necessary, but it's there, so we're going to deal with it. Right. Magnetar Shockwave Distance increased from 700 to 1000. Shockwave Cooldown decreased by one second at every level. Shockwave Cast Range increased to match its travel distance. Visual thing only, thank god. So, you know, people can actually uh, click. Yeah, click the hero or you can target the ground and you don't have to run up a couple stages before you just go in. Skier Air Lead increased slightly. Uh, skier Range increased from 800 to 1200. Skier only now counts uh, targets only considers heroes a valid target for dragon consideration with its unit cap. This doesn't really change anything. These are just small tweaks, but it doesn't really help Magnus in the overall scheme. Of I things. totally disagree. I think skewer range increase uh, oh, by yeah. fifty percent. Uh, did you did you say the last point didn't do much? Or no, I, I, I meant overall. I, I okay. don't think. I still don't think this will really change too much. I, I really do think that uh, maybe not on the like the highest level of competitive play. Now skewer is actually perfectly legitimate as a scape spell when you're getting ganked because that 800-1200 is a sizable increase. I feel like with with this you could very very much so just skip blink dagger altogether, giving yourself a free 2150. Like, you still want the blink, you know, for very good in, in initiation. But with the skewer range increase, maybe with your teammates four staff, that's all you need. Bam, go in with skewer. I, I think the skewer increase range is, is absolutely huge. I, I'm beating a dead horse with it. But, um, you know, from what we've seen in the history of competitive Dota, things like mobility, things like range, these are the two most important things in terms of m m if a hero is in the in the comp scene or not. I, I think this is huge. The thing about Magnus is that he's just so awkward. How do you play him? Do you play him as a solo mid where you can't really gank nearly as much? Do you play him as a hard carry? Or it, he can per I think he should be played more as a hard carry. Just because uh, his uh, empowerment. Here's the thing, so though. Good. Like, we don't need to figure that out. The pro teams will figure that out, and once they do have that figure out, this helps them land ultimate. 
So it just makes him a better hero overall. I think with this, once they have figured out with, with the skewer increase, once they have to figure out, you know, how we lane him, like the question that you asked, jungle, lane, solo, man, whatever that may be, you know, this gives him the ability to land ultimates very, very uh, precisely. And that, that's where he kind of transcends uh, normal AOE ultimates into the realms of things like a Blink Enigma Black Hole in terms of a Ravage, its reliability. This helps that. So I'm looking forward to more Magnus. So you think he's a niche pick now in certain lineups? Well, he's, he's already a niche pick, right? He's not. He's never seen. No. Who he plays him? Be. He should be. Because right, well, he got horns. And he got, like, I big still sticks. think we're never going to see him. But well, I, I hope, I hope to be proven wrong. Yeah, I hope you're wrong. So <laughs> Screw you. You always hope I'm wrong anyway. But I'm always right. Uh, except when I'm wrong. Meepo, poof cooldown decreased by two seconds at every level. And divide, we stand Aghanim's upgrade now gives clones... 100% stat sharing luminous. This is crazy. Eh, I feel like this is one of those like win more kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like if because you're not gonna get Agus up at first, right? You you're gonna get things like Vlats. You're gonna get things like Blink daggers. Maybe Mech. Maybe there's there's a lot of stuff you get before it. Once you do get the Acceptor and, and get your fifth Meeple and everybody gets tankier, that's great. It gives them a little bit more late game extension. But if they really want to kill you, they still can. Right? Um, if you're already poning without the Acceptor, you're going to pwn harder with the Acceptor. I think this is a win more kind of situation. I disagree with you on this one because you really need to get Ags as like one of your first couple items after the boots and mechanism just because... You farm faster with Aghanims, and once you get that Aghanims up, the fact that your clones are a lot more difficult to bring down is just so significant and it cannot be underestimated. You can't just uh, sort of Laguna Blade it as it comes into action. I think it's pretty significant and that it gives 100% stat sharing. Like, normal HP, Meepo has relatively high early strength growth, or not growth, early strength pool for mm -hmm. the most part. So Yeah, I think he starts with like 600 or 500 HP, so that's pretty high. So, it just I just wanted to disagree with you on, on the fact that I don't play a lot of Meeples, so I'm definitely no expert, and we definitely don't see him a lot in comp scene. But in the games that we've seen him being very successful, is something more of an offensive build, things like Blink Dagger. So, again, I, I'm going to just stand by my point um, that you just have to get it late, and you can't... You don't want your Meeple to be farming early. You want him to be killing, because once he's killing a lot of stuff, that's where he really is going to be leaping forward in terms of EXP. He's level 16, and you're like 9. So, and I don't think you're going to be, I don't think you should be farming for Acceptor. I think you should be farming for Blink and kill your way up to Acceptor and thus kill harder. That's that's where I stand. Well, there's always an awkward phase when you have two, between two and three Meepos, and mm -hmm. you have your mechanism finished, and, you know, if you don't need Blink Dagger, this could set up the phase for all right you get another initiator besides a meepo and then you just uh sort of follow up that initiator i think uh this will at least make meepo perhaps a very infrequent niche pick from time to time i think team's seen a grow balls and pick him he he's a fine kind of a semi carry in a sense so looking forward to more meepos all right marana owns arrow cooldown decrease from 20 to 17 so you can i guess use it in a team fight after a missed arrow or Twice, something like yeah, that yeah yeah Moonlight Shadow mana cost decreased from 175 to 75. Finally, it's, there's yes. an incentive to level up Moonlight Shadow at level 6 or something like that. Yeah, that's an important thing. Getting at level 6 before they get any type of de detection is very, very key. I, I know most pro teams would now have to fork up that 200 gold or 180 for, this, uh, for the, the dust now. It's such a huge bonus now to level up early and, and just make make it completely viable as a build in late game situation even in mid game situation marana has a lot of issues because she's you know flash farming with star storm you want to catch up and farm and still on, only 75 for the, the ability to cloak your entire team moonlight shadow i feel like is already a very very nicely designed and to be honest borderlinely broken spell and now we're going to see more moonlight shadow so a lot of surprise butt sex ganks out of nowhere is always good to fun to watch and cast not too not too fun to be on the receiving end of uh, moonlight shadow gang stuff definitely not as uh yeah maybe we'll hopefully we'll see more marana as morphling cast animation uh time improved from 0.45 to 0.4 uh this will help a little bit uh i still yeah, think morphling whatever. is okay after the nerf but yeah. there are just so maybe. many other hard carries to pick up Maybe they felt like they over-nerfed him a little bit. I mean, anti-mage is staging a comeback, so 
Yep. We're going to see that era of anti-mage versus Morphling again, maybe. Uh, but, you know, not not too big of a deal. Nagasai and Riptide cooldown was scaled from 10 to 19, 16, 13, 10. This is one of the nerfs I want on Naga. But yeah. I did underestimate in the last balance change analysis the cast point. Uh, so often we see Nagas just whiff nets because she's just waving her blades around. Man, what did I say? You did say it. I did not listen to you. So you were right, but I'm always right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But I think this is sort of the nerfs I was expecting. Cooldown nerfs. That's it. Other yes. than that, Naga's a perfectly fine hero. I'm fine with her. Just well, cooldowns. Well, per perfectly fine is a little bit subjective. But this is another very, very powerful nerf to her trialing ability. Riptide, a 10 second cool cooldown, you could actually use it twice in a, in a yep. team fight. Now, or twice in an early trialing engagement. And and the fact that this minus armor and nukes very heavily, it's insane. Now you're only using it once uh, in a particular team fight. I think it's a little bit more fair. And... Uh, very, very welcome nerf, I agree. I just shut down her trialing ability a little bit more, make teams a little bit more dedicated uh, in terms of running a Naga. You can't just jam it in any lane and, yeah, Naga, OP, make it work. Now you have to just be like, okay, well, we're picking Naga. We have to back her up in a sense. Yep. Necrolite, Heartstopper, Aura, damage increase from blah, 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 blah to 1.5% at max level. We're still leveling status. Yep. Let's, let's not joke here. And yep. then we're going to get better late game, so eh, I'm not complaining. Yeah, I mean, uh, waiting for Necrolite to be picked in one of these games. Yep. He's pretty cool. He yeah, is pretty cool. I think he's so much cooler in Dota 2. His voice acting is amazing. And the Reaper Scythe animation, I think, is the best animation in Dota. I have never actually heard of the uh, animation, because every time I use Reaper Scythe, I just screw like a little girl, because I'm looking at my plus 200 <laughs> monitor regen per second. I don't even hear what he says. No, the animation for Reaper Scythe, where just uh, a giant yeah. scythe comes down and That's slashes. That's true. That's insane. Oh, actually, I know, I know, Necrolite. I mean, he's he's a great hero. If I may suggest a a uh, further buff, I think Necrolite Reaper Scythe should should do a AOE burst damage like how Mana Void does. Just you know, flavorful thing. But that's me. That's just me. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll see. The we'll fact. See. Yep. Uh, Nervian Assassin Vendetta increased by 25 damage at every level. I'm still waiting for any to be picked, but the fact that it's so difficult to lane him, I, I thought we'd see more because more suitable ganking lineup, but it's just really difficult to lane him, so I was a bit wrong. But still, keep in mind, this has been less than a month. We still might just see NA. Yeah, I, maybe this is one of those heroes that takes a while to catch on. I, I, I welcome this buff in the sense that how many times that you're trying to combo off against a, a carry or a hero or something like that, and you just like miss one hit or... Uh, you know, miss like 20 damage. Too many times. Yeah, too many times, so. NA is going to be more more pub killing, and yes. that I hate. I hate so much, but, you know. He, he's a hero that needs a little bit more buff, apparently, to be in the comp scene. So we're waiting patiently for that day. Yep, the Ruby and Weaver, base damage increased by 4. I'm sure the Southeast Asians will love this, because Weaver already stable pick there. Obsidian Destroyer movement speed increased from 300 to 310, finally. But, uh... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it fixes his problems, sort of. Uh, he still has more problems. No escape, I mean, uh, the fact that his thing can be stopped by BKB, the fact that he can be ganked, uh, this helps. Uh, but helps. still, overall, not going to be that important in the grand scheme of things. Do you disagree? Agree. Agree. Okay, you agree. Ogre Magi multicast now increases cast range of Ignite by 150 per level. This is in addition to the existing AoE increase. Uh, okay. Now, cool. At least when you're playing Ogre, you can get that Ignite off, I guess. You could you could feel less bad when you only multicast on Ignite and nothing else. So, you know. Yep. It's just going to be up to the pros to make uh, these heroes trendy again. Omni Knight Purification cooldown decreased from 12 to 10. Movement speed increased from 300 to 305. So, buffs to Omni. Get his move speed up. Get the cooldown and purification decreased. Uh, I, I like Omni. But... Okay. Can I can I make my rant right now? Mm -hmm. Armly is by far one of the most broken hero in, in the game. The fact that he grants you physical immunity, magical immunity, and the fact that he drops 360 pair damage nuke bombs and as a turnaround, this hero needs to be in the competitive scene. I know he's he has that Magnus problem. How do you run him? How, how much EXP you give him? How much farm he gives him? You don't want to give him too much. You, he can't work without enough. Every time I see a Omni Knight on the enemy team as a pub, I just want to QQ out because... 
You can't beat this hero. It's insane. It's so and odd I because, you know, I think before TI1 and I'll, shortly after TI1 in the Dota 1 scene, Aunet Solo mid was all the trend and yes, he did not receive yes. any nerfs. He's still the same hero as he always has been. And he, I think he performed rather su successfully. Probably over a 50% win rate, at least to my knowledge. And the fact that he just dropped off the face of the earth. I think the fact that he's, alright, you can lane and he kind of sucks in lane. But the fact that everything else by Omni is just so good... It does help to sort of work him out. He's like a dazzle. You have to take a risk. But if yeah, you do the, take a risk, it's going to work out very well. The upside of Omni Knight is so huge that sometimes you're just going to take a risk and, and see if it works. And I think Navi ran it the other day, and apparently it worked very, very well for them. And maybe in Star Ladder Finals or whatever that might be. It, it's an insane hero, and I want to see more of him. Um, a lot of times, you know, you you he just wings team fight by himself because of the heal and because of you know the guardian angel and stuff. He, he's just a fun hero to watch. Yep, and great hero. Yeah. Phantom Lancer collision side decrease from twenty four to eight. I already see Phantom Lancer sometimes. This doesn't really change too much. He can just uh, run past his illusions a bit better, I suppose. And his illusions could not trip by each other, which is you know decent, whatever. Yep, Phoenix. I really don't want to go over Phoenix. She's probably yeah, he's probably gonna get reworked next patch anyway. The only hero I will not go over in this patch. Just, it's just too much. Puck base damage increased by 5. I'm sure people all over the world are ecstatic about this buff. Uh, it'll not help really. his laning a bit better. This is uh, pretty cool, but um, we'll see how the shape's up. I, I might be underestimating it. I may be overestimating, but hopefully... We see Puck very, very infrequently. Maybe this will see him uh, a little less infrequently. I, I previously thought with the whole uh, face shift change, he's already going to be insane, but apparently I was completely wrong about that. Um, sure, I mean, plus one more damage. Whatevers. Yep, Pugno life drain break threshold range increased from 900 to 1100. Netherward AoE increased from to 1600 at all levels. Now, this has been trending, but Pugna has been trending up quite hard recently yes, in the European yes. scene. And uh, this buff might have been a bit too premature, but... This will help out Pugna quite a bit. You only really need... I mean, the Netherward AoE is going to be the same at every level, but the Zap damage will not be as strong. But the Life Drain Break Threshold is pretty significant. Um, I mean, if, if you think about the Netherward AoE increase, I, it, it looks like it's... Yeah, it's getting buffed. But to be honest, it's it's not really... it's like It looks like a buff, but it really isn't. Because when you're running away in a team fight, you're not going to be casting much spell when you're running away. The only thing this really... It's, it's a huge buff is... In, in grand scheme team fights where you know stuff is happening all over the place uh, but at that point you have nether war maxed so I, I and you should have nether war maxed you, you shouldn't be really skilling to Cryptify, but maybe this gives you the reason to skill to Cryptify, right you that can could max be an offensive trial yeah hey. i mean tara so, sand king you only need one point in nether one point now. yeah you're ex yeah i'm great you brought up that he, he's a great sand king counter because of the range now so you could in theory put that one point into nether war but Nether was such a beautiful spell that you should max it. But going back to what what we we're saying, you know, maybe you max the Cryptify now. Hey, that's that. It is a thing when you run things like CM, Lena, Pugna. Come at me, bros. Seriously. All right, moving on to Razor. I have the Storm Strike Interval decreased from 0 0.85, 0 0.75, 0 0.6 to 0 0.75, 0 0.65, 0 0.55. That's a lot of point fives. This doesn't fix anything, any of Razor's problems, in my opinion. So whatever. It doesn't fix the issue that he's. Freaking boring as a hero. I, I think he just needs better stats. His stat growth is abysmal. If he just fixes stats a bit, he should be okay. Especially Actually, since trials are picking up. This buff, again, it doesn't look like a big thing, but I think it is a pretty big thing in terms of increasing his Eye of Storm damage output. You gotta keep in mind that every strike that you do hit on the same target, it does apply a minus armor. And now you're striking more, you're doing more minus armor, you're doing more damage. It makes I uh, it makes the acceptor build on Razor a little bit more of a legitimate thing as a tower pusher because okay, you're striking okay, a lot calm faster. Down, calm down. Again, <laughs> it doesn't fix most of his problem where he's hugely dependent on the link. You have to build him tanky. He doesn't do anything like if the link doesn't go off. I think he's a fine hero. Um, I hate to see him being played because I think he's boring for the most part, but. With the link change back in 6.75 being a little more reliable, you can't juke it, it will go through invis, it will go through banishment, it goes through everything. He he is by far one of the best way to counter a fed nix. Like, there's no better counter. Just, just, you had to run from him or your melee carry is dead. 
in a sense. So he has his place. Uh, we haven't seen him too much yet, but you know, Trilings is on the comeback, right? So Razor is a very, very fine Trilings hero. So getting this buff is great. Yeah, but it won't change anything. <laughs> the Ice Storm wouldn't change anything. Link would, and you know, whatever. Yeah. All right, Rubik Fade will damage decrease by an insignificant amount. Yeah. Uh, just a spell steal cast range nerf, but uh, still Whatever. won't change anything about Rubik. Silencer, global silence cooldown decrease from 160 to 140. Yes. Global silence duration increase from 3, 4, yes. 4.56 to 4.56. Base intelligence increased by 6. Base damage yes. reduced by 6. Curse of the Silent. You okay? You're just saying no, yes good. over and over. It's... I said no big deal with base damage, though. Okay. Curse of no. the Silent duration rescaled from 5, 6, 7, 8 to 6. Okay. Curse of the Silent HP redrained, rescaled from 20, 30, 40, 50 to 20, 35, 50, 65. Right. Curse of the Silent Mana Drain rescaled from 10, 15, 20, 25 to 8, 16, 24, 32. Don't matter. And Steel moved from Last Word back to Glaives of Wisdom. Don't matter. Gla well, we're going to see with the new skill. Glaives of Wisdom now steals intelligence from outside of the AoE if Silencer gets a kill. Cool. In steal AoE increased from 850 to the standard 900 yes. AoE range. And Last Word has now been replaced with a new active skill. Last Word. Targets an enemy unit, placing a debuff on it. While the debuff is acted, active, casting any spell causes the target to become silenced and take damage. If the duration of the debuff runs out without the target casting a spell, it will still take damage and be silenced, but also be disarmed. Debuff duration, 5 seconds. Damage significant at around 300 damage. Silence, disarm duration, 3, 4, 5, 6. Cast range, 900 significant. 9 freaking 100. Cooldown, relatively short, pretty much a flame break cooldown at 12 seconds. Mana cost, 100. What do you okay. think? Alright, so, let, let's, let's, you know, top down this a little bit. Curse of Silent, getting a lot of drains buff. What I don't care. We're not skilling Curse of Silent. We're going we're going Glaives and Stats. Uh, Glaive Stats and Last Word. Gla Glaive Last Word Stats, sorry. Global Actually, Silence. Actually, you, you skill Curse of Silence against like an Ed to Major or a Void. That's it. <laughs> no, you want the stats. I, you don't skill anything. It's like, it's now the worst scale in the game after Chilling Touch, chilling touch getting buff. Anyways, Global Silence getting a very, very muscle needed buff. I think it's probably one of the more broken spell in the entire game because it's a freaking Global Silence. At the same right, it's one of the more difficult spells to land because too early, it doesn't do anything. Too late, it doesn't do anything. So when you have a lot of do nothings, when you cast it wrongly, and has a 160 second cooldown, it's a lot of difficult stuff to mesh together. We know what Glaive does. Increasing the base intelligence by 6 and decreasing the base damage by 6, this is actually a buff. Your damage doesn't change, that's great. Your Glaive of Wisdom gets a tiny bit stronger. Your Mana Regeneration gets a tiny bit stronger, and that means you're casting more shit. So, all, all this so far looks good. Okay, the previous problem with Silencer is that, aside from his ultimate and the casual Glaive damage, sometimes if you get enough farm, he doesn't do a jack squat in a team fight. Now he does a little bit more. Uh, he still doesn't do much, but he still he does a little bit more. Global Silence is still there. Glaive is still there. Last Ward is a very, very good laning spell to get. Not only are you either going to disarm him, which, you know, you don't want to get disarmed for five seconds in, 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 in the freaking uh, lane, or you're going to be silencing him, which whatever, whatever you're, you're doing to him, disarm or silence, that's great. You're getting 300 damage, single target noon, and 900 range. The cooldown is very, very long in the early get-go get of the game, 36, 28, 20, 12. So until you actually max it, you're not going to be lane harassing like insane. But it has a very muscle like a Kofi plus a um, Kofi or a... Um, what's that Invoker OP spell called? Cold Snap? Oh, Kofi and Cold Snap? Oh, Cold Snap. Oh, <laughs> nice joke, bro. <laughs> Kofi plus Cold Snap. It has that pseudo ability because when that thing is cast on you... Like, what do you do? You're, you're taking damage. You're either silenced or the arm, disarm. I, I guess you want to be disarmed instead of being silenced, but you're not lasting for a bit. I don't know. Like, it's just hard to lane against the spell overall. Yeah. I think it's... And that's, that's oh. where he's it. Sorry, one, one last thing before I pass the mic to you. He has good laning, which we saw different variations Silencer had in the past. But his laning spell isn't a waste of a spell once he go into a team fight. Now... We do miss the old last word, like the, the eh, every three seconds. That is very, very annoying to play against. I'm not just, I'm not sad to see it gone. But the fact that Global Silence has a sizable buff now, I think we're okay without it. Yeah, I think previously we wouldn't even see Silencer being picked to counter mass team fight. I think the only way 
I'd ever pick Silencer in a game is to counter like Puck or Shake or Tiny or something like that. Uh, with and last word, for me. Right? Huh? With last word? Yeah, with the last word. With this old last word. Now, he has a laning presence, like you mentioned, and I think the fact that the damage is not a damage over time, at least from what I understand from this, this description, it says outright damage, that is significant. So you can burst somebody down, 900 cast range, relatively fair cooldown, so it's not imbalanced, but it's pretty cool. Uh, and the fact that, you know, you can get a bit more damage on Glaze's Wisdom early on, base damage increased, base or base damage, or base intelligence increased, my god, can't speak apparently. It's cool. The problem with Silencer is that he's squishy and he's slow. But he is now at least a bit more appealing to pick him, because he's not just press E, stand back, or press R, stand back for the ultimate. You just uh, have a bit more laning presence, you can put him in the lane, and he has a shorter cooldown on the Globe of Silence, which you do have to take into account. So I think this is a necessary change, it is a good change. It doesn't fix everything Silencer had, but if you fixed everything that Silencer had, he'd be the most broken. He would not be done. Silencer. He'd be the most broken thing. He'll be done. Windrunner. Yeah. So here, here, here's, here's an awkward issue with last word. Like, he he's not really a trialing hero in a sense, because... The damage is very, very much delayed. Uh, it is burst damage, you are hitting for 300, but the debuff duration is 5 seconds. So in a sense, you're not actually doing anything for 5 seconds if they want it to be, right? If they just run away, that 300 damage does not come in till the end of 5 seconds. So in a sense, he's that really stops him from being an ultra laner in a sense. So he's very awkward. I'm not sure where, where do you put him? Do you put him solo mid and get that farm, make him not slow, make him not squishy by getting things like mech four staff? Or do you put him as a pseudo support role? Because, you know, last word getting the old last word is by far one of the more interesting, one of the more unique and a very powerful spell. Now you don't have that semi team fight silency spell anymore. You have a single target sort of silence sometimes spell. So, I don't know. I, I don't know if this is overall a good change. I think this does give him the enough laning capability to take that mid lane for your team, though. So, I'm very, very happy to see him change. I, I think the hero needs some change because, oh, like, like you said, the old hero is not good enough. Yep, so that delayed damage could be a factor. So, uh, yeah, overall, this will help Silencer, at least lane a bit better. Uh, mm -hmm. Still, still would barely be seen. Alright, Sniper, Assassinate cast range increased to more, 500 at every level. Headshots, procs cannot be evaded, the entire attack gets through. Headshot That's chance uh, from 25, 30, 35, 40 to 40 at every level. Headshot damage, 30, 45, 60, 75 to max of 90, a little less damage earlier on. Headshot mini stun from 0.1 to 0.25 at every level. Uh, shrapnel provides vision to the targeted area, and the biggest one, shrapnel cast range increased from 1200 to 1800. Ridiculous cast range increase, and it provides vision. Wow. Freaking OP. 1800 think... range. That is ridiculous. Okay, if you're playing that is, on the that is level four thrall glimpse status. Yes. If you're playing on the radiant side, right, and you feel like the dire is Roshani, you can stand on your side of the river, shrapnel on their side, and see it. That's how far that thing is. I'm, I'm. By the way, I have not tested that, but I assume that's 1800 range. I, I think I want to say that's 1800 well, range. Well, punch hook range is either 1200 or 1300. So it, it definitely not. Then I, I think it's insane. Let's let's go again top down this one. The assassinate change doesn't matter too much aside from the first level to getting above. How many times when you're level like seven, you're seeing a prey walking away, but you ha you're walking very very slowly. I you might have to add, just to walk at them, and then you find out, oh, there's three other uh, yeah. allies of his teammates still there, and they're gonna kill me. Yeah, but this this is gonna help you find more kills in the early levels, which sniper is you know pretty slow during that that time. Headshot proc cannot be evaded, and you are now headshotting for forty percent of time. That's huge. That makes MKB an afterthought. Well, I don't want to say afterthought because it's only 40%, but it gives you more versatility in terms of late game build. Early on, if you're doing some of more of a solo miss sniper, which is definitely a thing now with the recent changes, you're not missing up the hill 40% of the time. And trust me, that is a, a very, very sizable increase when you're harassing, when you're trying to last it. it, it there's less grief when you're proccing. Now, there's one quote-unquote pseudo nerf in a sense it's a first level headshot and generally most players do leave it at the first level headshot you're only getting 15 damage on level one and why might you say that's a kind of a nerf 
first of all, you're getting 15 damage less compared to the previous one. And now you're actually, your, your, your um, proc range, your proc percentage is now actually now higher, so proc more frequently. And this becomes an issue when you're trying to last it under a tower. As you guys might know, you need two hits. Uh, you need to hit once on a melee creep and then hit them again after a tower has pwned them a couple of shots. Same thing with the range creeps. And now the fact that you're proccing higher, you're actually getting that 15 extra damage more frequently. Yep. It makes last hitting under a tower a little bit more of a grief uh, because you can't really control the proc as well as you previously... Well, because it's a higher percentage. I, I hope I'm, what I'm saying right now is making sense. You are going to miss a little, slightly more uh, last hits under the tower. But I think that makes up by you know getting overall more procs, uh, by more harassment overall. And, and the huge thing, like you talked about, is the shrapnel. The fact that you could scout with it across river against Roshan. The fact that you could push with it, just shrapnel in the, in the shadows, especially during nighttime, and their tower is dying. Alright, you, um, you one last thing about this sniper thing. I play Batrider a lot. You know, it's my best hero. I'm pretty good with Batrider. Uh, now's your chance to agree. Say you are the best. You're the best Batrider player. Thank I've you. Ever seen. Thank you. I know. But. Oftentimes, I'll play Barrett over Sniper. He has that 1200 cast rate on Shrapnel, so he's going to use it. And Blink Dagger range, I'll be able to get just right up next to him if possible, because Lasso has 150 cast range, so I can get right up close to him, get the Lasso, drag Sniper, kill him. Now, 1800 range, I'm, I have no chance of blinking up next to him. And the fact that the Blink Dagger just, it's so much more difficult to push against Sniper. Like, you can't initiate it on him anymore. It's ridiculously difficult. And I think that's probably the most important thing. Cast range increased, and you just... If he's staying back, which he should, he won't be doing damage as auto attacks, but that's okay. You just rain down the shrapnel until they approach relatively soon. And then you might walk up, hit a creeps, or split the Mantis style or something like that. Now you can't initiate on him if he's using the maximum range. And as long as he's letting the teammates clear the creeps. It's yeah, pretty I think, insane. I think with the recent... Sh well, Tig Aim got buffed in the last patch, and now with Headshot and Shrapnel getting buffed, you're not you're not locked down onto maxing Shrapnel by 7, or maxing Tig Aim by 7, or even maxing Headshot by 7. With the, you're getting freaking 90 bonus damage on a proc Headshot, so I think Headshot max is a legitimate thing. You you could do a lot. We could see the Trialing Sniper, we could see a Defensive Dueling Sniper, we could even see Solo Mid Sniper. There's a lot of versatility in the same hero. Eventually, you're going to get all your spells maxed, and that's cool and stuff. But in early get-go, we could see many, many sniper paths, and I think we need to see that, because sniper is not picked at all right now. Yep, so it's going to be even more defending against him, and now, or even more annoying to push against him, and now he has more versatility in the laning phase. Mm -hmm. Alright, Templar Assassin Sonic Trap now requires a build-up time to reach its maximal slow, starts at 30%, and increases by 5% each second until it reaches 50%. This is a good nerf. Um, it won't change Templar Assassin's pick status, but... This was completely necessary in order to make her not as ridiculous at ganking. Not gonna lie, I think this is actually my favorite uh, change uh, on the enti entire patch. I, I feel like this is now, I think this is a correct fix. I, I think this is a very yeah. beautifully thought out fix as well. How many times have you seen a Templar Assassin miss a trap and they're like, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Lay another trap right on top of you and, and just go at it. This makes a Templar Assassin a little bit more difficult to play, a little bit. Uh, Fits her style, right? You can't just... You're Assassin. You don't have multiple chances. You got that one or two chance. That's it. And, of course, this makes her more trappish in a hero that you actually have to lay down those traps instead of just walk up to you and kill you. So, yeah, I, I love this change. I think now she's still going to be good with refraction. Like, that. that's not changing a, at all anytime soon. So, but, you know, a, a welcome nerfed. It's just not as easy to chase anymore. You actually have yes. to think yeah. about it. And that's very welcome. I, I have to agree with you. This is a very nice fix. Terrible and metamorphosis bonus damage increase from 15, 30, 45, 60 to 20, 40, 68. I personally can't wait for Terrible to be in Dota 2 because he was so much fun in Dota 1, at least for me. I haven't played Terrible for like fucking three years. Yeah, but you know, he has the old Conjure image and that was one of my favorite carries in Dota 1. But he's not in Dota 2, can't really discuss him. Mm -hmm. Tide Hunter Ravage damage decreased by 50 at all levels. Well, actually 50, then 25, and then it scales at the normal. So 250 to 200. 350 to 325, 450 to 450, and a lot of small Tide Hunter Ravage nerfs. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me before, as we were happening, you don't really think this is completely necessary. I think you're already uh, kind of punished enough in the sense of 
the fact that your your tr projectile travel range, those tentacle travel range speed or whatever you call it, it's already slow enough. You are missing ravages, especially with the recent nerf. I think this takes it away from uh, you know your casual or your solo solo mid high hunter. Sometimes you want to rush that level eleven. You're missing some sizable damage, uh, especially on the first level. I don't think it's needed, but apparently. I just think so. So, yeah. yeah, and support tri tight hunters. How long do we see them stay at like level nine for the majority of the game? Right. It's and when you're losing fifty damage a minute thirteen, like that could be a difference. Yeah, in and in AOE, if it hits all yeah. five heroes, that's two hundred fifty damage. That's no, calm down. Total. It's not hitting five heroes, but you know it could. It could. It could. That's yeah. the point. Well, not level one. It won't hit all five heroes. Yeah. Trant protector strength growth increased from 2.8 to 3.3. Leveling armor HP regen increased from 4, 6 to 8 to 10 to a maximum of 13. Now, I bought into the hype. You bought into the hype. Teams bought into the hype for the first two days. What happened? Teams are not playing it right. Because obviously I'm right. Okay. Teams that tried it, they didn't try it well enough. No, okay. I don't know. I Apparently, apparently, this hero is not as OP as we thought it is. And a lot of times when we see a skill being written out and we don't test it ourselves because, you know, we can't test it ourselves because we want to upload this as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we're flat out wrong, and apparently we're flat out wrong. I don't think I'm wrong, though. I think that this skill is still very, very broken. But, uh, you know, action speaks louder than words. And I we're think not uh, people are not using it on towers enough just yes. to heal them back yes. up to full HP. That's a huge thing, seriously. Um, but, you know... Hey, whatever. I still think his ultimate sucks, though. But that's just me. Yep. Uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> Venomancer, Venomous Scale. Overall, nerfs to Venomancer. Uh, poison Sting, Duration, Rescale, blah, blah, blah. Nerfs to Venomancer, pretty much the quintessential dual lane trial and support. Was this overall necessary? I mean, so often we just see Venomancer stay as a support hero. So this is just going to nerf him completely to the ground as that regard. It's just going to be more difficult to play him as a sport just because of the mana cost is a uh, little bit more annoying unless you level it up. Um, I'm not sure whether this makes a difference between uh, the two. You can have fire off two gales uh, to three gales now, or excuse me, where you can fire off three gales before and now only two gales, or is it two gales before and one gale? Because that is actually a big thing, and I, yeah. I don't play Venomancer enough to know. Uh, he has a very low mana pool. I think. I he think does. it might be two gales. Two gales to one gale instead of three to two? I think it might be. And and the fact that, I mean, his... <laughs> I, I want to say this is a necessity, but, I mean, whatever. <laughs> yeah. If you're hitting the gale, you know, you're, you're missing that damage. You're still getting 50% slow. Like, it's still one of the best early ganking spells in the game. So, I, I, I don't want to say this is a necessity, but I'm not crying over it. Whatever. Okay. Warlock yeah. Infernal attack damage increased from 50, 75, 100 to 75, 100, 125. Yo, where are the Mass Fatal Bonds dried at? I think this hero is already good enough. Um, as I say that, he has no stun. No yep. ca uh, freaking spammable stun. But Yo, I don't think Infernal damage down. increase is going to change anything. But, you know, he, he's going to be there. Uh, Winter Wyvern. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> as he'll probably be changed, probably either buffed or nerfed or something. Uh, we don't care at this point. Witch Doctor, Deathward Agonim's upgrade changed from three target at split to five target pass. Dang. That is so Dang. cool. Rampage that, time, no that joke. That is so cool. That is just like the coolest thing. You get Ags, hits everything. Right, well, I'll, I'll go into that later, but sure. <laughs> Deathward multi attack bounce AoE increased from 550 to 650. Okay, Deathward cooldown decreased from 90 to 80. So, so you're bouncing against five targets, but those five targets have to be very, very close to each other, or at least 650 range close to each other. So, Shh, be quiet. Don't run um, my phone. We gotta live the dream. We gotta live the dream <laughs> of the black hole or, or the reverse polarity into Witch Doctor Rampage. But some, something to keep be kept in mind. I've been playing Witch Doctor a lot lately. Um, and, and the fact that I see now this buff is, is just absolutely hilarious. I think Witch Doctor, to be honest, is completely viable as a hero. I agree. There's so, there's so many voids running around lately. There's so many big AoE strat running around that lately. Draw Witch Doctor is just like insane in a sense. So, more Witch Doctor time. And, and boy, if you're going to have a farm Witch Doctor, holy effing cow. Like, I'm about to just thinking about it. Uh, just another little fun side note. Uh, just a little bit off topic. 
Yo, when are we running the Manager and Curse of Silence lane? Not anymore. Be oh. Yeah, never, because Curse of Silence is the best spell. It's the worst spell in the game now. Yeah, but Manager is the best. That's true. Okay. Zeus, Thunder God's Wrath damage increased from T10. More damage. Uh, 15 damage at all levels. Thunder God's Wrath Agnum's damage increased from 400, 500, 600 to 440, 540, 640. Uh, you know, cool. Zeus is a niche pick. Niche pick indeed. Uh, it makes you come back from those 06 Zeus games a little bit easier, I guess. You can KS easier now. I don't think the Yo, 15 damage. Once I upload that offlane Zeus game, you're going to see as yeah. they just got stomped. <laughs> yeah, so to be honest, I think this is one of those things that Ice Rock did to make people look at Zeus more and be like, yeah, Zeus is a hero. You know, yeah, he, you he know, does uh, exist. Increase Berserker's Call Armor by 10. All right, yeah, play Axe, yeah. go. He's I mean, 10 more he, armor. He, I mean, I think it's more important to actually buff Zeus and Axe because Zeus is the end of the list of the heroes alphabetically, uh, so people don't even think about him. He's actually a hero, guys. You but can he's play the him first sometimes. hero before items. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. He's the first hero ever existed back in 3000 BC. This, game, this guy don't joke. Yo, fundamentals. Apparently Enigma, Wisp, Chaos Knight. Have you been reading that Dota 2 lore? No. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool. Boots of Speed... All right, all the boots get a move speed bonus decrease by five. Boots of speed mm -hmm. price decrease by fifty. All right, so obviously the boots of speed price decrease by fifty. Obvious buff to supports. Obvious buff to everybody. What are your thoughts on the move speed being decreased by five? This is, I think we sort of touched on it in our pre-game discussion, or as sort of a nerf to things like Yasha and phase boots or something like that. But okay, I'm not so too sure. Yeah, there's two different things, um, or at least I see as two different things. You guys could, I, I'm not sure which one is more intended. I think with the recent uh, war change being cheaper by 50 gold, and the fact that now this is cheaper by 50 gold, you're getting in your boots a little bit faster. And the fact that when your supports have boots faster, and for example, their supports don't have boots faster, it makes your killing power increase by a significant amount. So that's, you know, number one, where supports you get boots a little bit faster. Number two is, like, what people on just touch upon. It's a snipe nerf, in a sense. It's, it's a very snipe nerf, too, in a sense. The things yeah, like face boots, snipe nerf? drums, Wex Invoker, Yasha, any type of stuff that based on percentage movement speed. And to be honest, it makes things like, it makes anything uh, that puts you at max movement speed you know, a little bit stronger, in a sense. So, hey, Stampede, anybody? But everybody's apparently moving max speed nowadays. In yeah. fact, 522 even isn't a limit. I mean, have you seen Spirit Breaker? That no. thing's on crack all I the time. I think that's like max 750? 700? 750? I, I don't know. Like, apparently 522 even a limit. Like, people yep. are over buff to, buff to Magnus Skewer. <laughs> there you go. Alright. Armlet cooldown increased from 1 to 2. Yeah. Uh, probably necessary, but, yeah. you know, it was nice having that 1 second cooldown where you could just you know, seeing a bit more uh, life stealers getting that spear breaker armlet. Uh, a little bit sad, but it was necessary. Okay, here here's the thing that I want to rant a lot about, but after <laughs> you read the stats first. Yeah, well, this is the one I knew even before we didn't even discuss this at all. But I knew I was gonna troll you so hard. I was gonna say how you feel about this luminous four staff new four staff no more old four staff now you get a new one 100 one requires staff of wizardry 1000 gold rig of regeneration 350 gold recipe 1000 gold total 2350 gets plus 10 intelligence and plus three regeneration and force is the same but yeah okay so basically instead of using the ring of region and and a cheaper recipe or sorry, instead of using the quarter staff and a cheap recipe, you use a ring of regen and a very, very expensive recipe. Okay, so think of the heroes that normally get four staff now. It's the likelihood is the invoker, uh, the windrunner, any other big four staff buyers that are like absolutely core in their item set. I think those two are the forerunner of the of the uh, pool, right? I think it, it, it's weak for these particular heroes because both invoker and windrunner. Don't mind the 10 damage. Don't mind the 10 attack speed. They're, they're happy with that. You could consider this as a nerf to the uh, to the to those two heroes. But I think this new buildup is a huge buff to anybody else that's getting it. 
So because of the buildup is a lot nicer, because the Ring of Regeneration could be picked up a lot earlier and you benefit in lane, and whatever, you know, 1,000 recipe, you are forking out 900 in the previous quarter staff anyways, I don't think the buildup in itself has changed that much in terms of a price jump. The fact that you could get Ring of Regeneration earlier means more hero could buy it. Now, I'm not sure if Invoker and Wimmera will stop buying four staff because they're missing the 10 damage and 10 attack speed. Very likelihood they will still buy it because mobility is the most important back part of the four staff. I just think that more people will buy it now, and I don't think four staff needs our kind of buff. If I could call it a buff, and I think it's a buff. It's also, well, I mean, it's a buff to, like you said, heroes who don't want it for the damage. It's a slight nerf to, like, intelligence scares like Silencer, Obsidian Destroyer. Alright, who cares about them, honestly? But You're still I, getting plus 10 from the Staff of Wizard. Yeah, but they're not getting the damage and attack seed, which they, right, right. they do like. Yes. But, I have to agree with you. I was actually uh, hoping that you were going to probably like jizz all over this. But I have to agree with you. Do we really need more people buying 4 Staff? We already see, you know, I've seen games where people get 3 or 4 4 Staffs a game. So... I mean, an argument that you could make against this is that you're not going to see more 4 staff, but you're going to see different heroes buying 4 staff. So instead okay, of things okay. like you talked about Obsidian Destroyer, Silencer, Invoker, Windrunner, you know, you're going to see, let's say, Witch Doctor, Crystal Minion, you know, the, the, it's easier to build up now with the Ring of Regen. It's a nicer build up. Uh, more support if your 4 row, your 5 row could feasibly pick it up. But to be honest, this 2 row and 3 row still want the 4 staff because 4 is OP. So, likelihood, I believe, you're going to see more 4 staff. And to be honest, does Nyx need that extra 4 staff to be against him? Like, he's already crying. I know. Does, does Magnus need that? No. Nobody needs more 4 staff. 4 staff is the best item in the game. I, I truly believe that. Uh, I don't, Magic I don't Wand think he needs disagrees. Veil of Discord? Or, or sorry, what was it? Magic Wand. Ethereal Blade? Uh, E-Blade disagrees Ethereal as well. Blade. E-Blade, second best item in the game. Uh, no talisman recipe cost decreased from 155 to 145. Dagon buff, 10 gold. My god. You get that from literally waiting around for like 8 seconds. Okay, guys. I actually think the no talisman buff is uh, slightly. It's a small buff, but things like, you know, uh, your in base silencer going in mid, obsidian destroyer going in mid. It, it's a small change, but I, I think no talisman first, like, you know, how Wraith Man first or Shadow Fiend or, or Murano. Yeah, it's, it's pretty decent. Alright, Rod of Eidos, cast range increase from 800 to 1200 soul, increase from 50 to 60%. I have yet to see a Rod of Atos in a professional match. Do you think that will change at all? You know, buffing it by 400 range might. Maybe so the, the fact that, <laughs> Look, I love... Okay, sorry. I was about to say I love Rod of Eidos, and I was like, wait, hold on. No. I don't love Rod of Eidos. I think it's a decent item, but for 3k go, or is it 3, 3.1? 3.1k go... You're getting a four staff and a half, or you're getting a four staff. And four staff, like I just said, is the best item. Like, there's a lot of so many different alternatives that are just better than a Rod of Eidos that you should just stick with those items. So, sorry, Rod of Eidos, but you are the weakest link. The weakest link. Yeah, the range is the only incredibly good ner or buff, but we're not going to see it unless we see like a ridiculous uprising. I mean, it's a good item on Silence and OD sometimes when you need to tank ability. Yeah. It's decent on Krob, actually. Yeah, it's it's okay on Krob, but it's... Yeah. I mean, you just... You don't really need to slow people down Krob when you're sieging a base. Alright, Shadow Amulet, worst item in the game, still remains the worst item in the game. Really? Yeah. Okay. Remember DC chat, everybody was saying, Oh my god, Shadow Amulet is so good, you get free teleport I could teleport think of worse out. items in the game. Huh? I, mean, I, I could think of worse items in the game. Like what, Rod of Eidos? Like Rod of Eidos. <laughs> The fade time is just too big, and the fact they stay in place is just too It gives you plus 30 attack speed. I mean, that's something. Rod of Eidos is just nothing. You get HP and, you know, intelligence. You get more mana. Cool. You don't get anything. You get, oh man, you can attack so much faster while you're fading out. And Shadow Emulet. That's the thing, man. You that get three hits instead of, instead of two. Alright, uh, new game mode. Okay. I personally thought the new game mode was pretty cool. I mean, the more modes, the better. But, you know, it ultimately does not matter. Remove some residual caster unit vision from various miscellaneous abilities, so less vision on certain abilities. So, uh, overall, nice fixes. Trying to make it more consistent, and more consistency in Dota, the better. People often complain about consistency in Dota. Yep. So, overall, uh, 
What do you think about this patch? Um, I'm kind of sad that they took away the um, boring passive, and boring is a very, very subjective. This is the old marksmanship, the old great of fortitude. I, I, I love the idea of a time attack. We saw a lot, and we see this like a concept a lot in Brew Wars and StarCraft 2 and, where you and the non dying games and lone druid games timing attacks timing attacks I mean uh, I'm sad they took that ability away but Drow Ranger still has that pseudo timing attack I, I love the change I love the new concept um, you're still getting the the whole timing attack thing but now you have a whole different aspect I, I, I welcome the change to silencer sniper um, centaur and Drow I think these are all great changes uh, there's some some changes I, I don't really particularly agree, like the TIE Hunter, I think he's fine, but apparently he needs more nerf. Oh, by the way, I love the Templar Assassin, I think I said that already. Mm -hmm. So overall, I felt like this is a very, very good patch. I'm still a little bit dubious on the four staff, but time will tell, as uh, all of them, you know, all of this, as always does, sorry. Uh, I, don't, I disagree with things like Luna, getting buff, you know, all that stuff. But yeah, it's overall a very, very good patch. I gotta say though, not as good as a 6.75 patch though, because that not. that patch was insane. I think this patch is more necessary because uh, maybe Ice Frog thought we'd see a bit more drastic change in Megame. We still see pretty much, you know, Rubik, Anti Mage, Naga Siren. Uh, only a couple of new heroes have been introduced, were like Bat Rider, uh, Alchemist. I think we maybe want to see more changes faster. Maybe he just felt like we didn't get uh, he didn't get all the patches he wanted in the last patch. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't speak for Ice Frog. Um, he probably has a lot more subtle things in mind. He's like eight billion times smarter than I am, so I can't really begin to guess. But maybe you just didn't want you wanted things to go a bit faster with this patch because it's probably going to be a while until the next major balance patch. So I guess you just want to change it up as much as possible. Yep. Uh, overall, I do like this patch. Uh, and the last part of this is hero to watch out for. We always make predictions on which hero will you watch out for, as I always predict Batrider, but he will not be a hero to watch out for in this patch. Because he's already watched out. Yeah. Right? He's already first pick, so... Yep, so my hero to watch out for is Sniper, because headshot, ridiculous, cast range is ridiculous, and now you can assassinate a bit more easily. It's a very, very... He doesn't really fit what Ice Frog is going for, which is shorter games, but he adds a nice dimension, just because... Alright, if you don't push in, then you're pretty much screwed, like the old Spectre was. And he's a bit more annoying than the old Spectre, because, you know, Spectre needs to save up that ridiculous number of gold. You know, Sniper can do pretty well with a uh, small item space, so Sniper is my hero to watch out for in this patch. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say Sniper as well, but uh, I guess I could list some of the other reasons. I feel like right now the new Sniper is a immobile cannon. Like, he's going to shoot stuff down very very far range if you come near him he's gonna headshot you for freaking 90 damage which by the way does have the true strike build ability built in so doesn't need to get an mkb although still a very very good part of the build the shrapnel range as a scouting mechanism as a pushing me mechanism anti-gang whatever you want to call it the range increase is absolutely huge and like we talked about earlier the versatility in lane what do you want to max shrapnel by seven what do you want to max tech game or even headshot by seven there's so many different ways to build it i'm looking forward to different teams as well as different players to kind of play with them test them out um one thing i also want to make a guess is be on the lookout for Centaur if he's available. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he he is running people over with Stampede. And, of course, he's already a very, very high base nuker. Um, before level 6, though, it's very, very hard for him to actually get a kill without any setup stun. So, that there's that. But, you know, hey. He's fucking Stamping in. So, yep. that's all I gotta say. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. And I think this patch went a little bit longer than expected. But we covered every single hero change. All the item changes. So, hopefully, y'all enjoyed that. Uh, be on the lookout for us at DotaCommentaries.com. Please support the tournaments and all the things. Uh, you can find Lewis at YouTube.com slash Lewis Please check him out if you have not done so. He is probably the best around. And ain't nothing ever going to keep him down, apparently. Damn. Any last shoutouts? No. Uh, thanks for having me here. It was great to talk about this patch change. And of course, also support b 773 If you haven't supported, uh, if you haven't subscribed to him, I don't know what you guys be doing. Yeah. I mean... They're probably a bit dissuaded because I only do commentaries now, but other stuff is going to come out soon. <laughs> I say that every other day, but, you know, it's coming. But thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.